have you seen her? So tell me, have you seen her, seen her? Oh, I see her lips on my eye. Oh, hey, everybody, so welcome to the Walter Jones Show. I'm he. It is the evening edition. Baby, how y'all is? Come on in, the water is fine. Mm. Oh, boy. This right here is a doozy. Ooh, to the wee, to the wee, wee, to the wee, wee. This one right here is a doozy. This one right here, I think probably going to take some time to do. I'm going to try not to be out here all night because this is kind of important for me to express to y'all. I got a problem, though, and I'm hoping that you on YouTube and Facebook uh, will help me out with this problem that I have. First of all, I probably need to change my glasses. That's the first problem I have. Put on my spectacles so that I can see y'all in your comments uh, because these glasses right here only work when I'm driving or when I, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put on these so that I can see y'all's blood type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see clearly now. Yeah, t uh, Tony, you are uh, O positive. All right, I got a problem. Here's my problem. Fancha. I put on my wall that I was getting ready to do a show tonight about uh, James Morgan. You help me out on this because you're a very intellectual brother. I put on my wall today that I was doing a show tonight about why women can't perform. Obviously, I was talking about sex. Let me tell you what happened. Almost 100% of the women, almost 100% of them blamed the man. Yeah. Yeah, James, I did that. Almost 100% blamed the man. There was only one who says you might want to look at it a different way. I said, boy, these folks don't even realize that they just got set up. Mm -hmm. Almost, yeah, the pits, almost. It was only one that says, look at it a different way. Okay, so here's what I need to do because I've got a serious matter that I want to discuss with you tonight. All right? There are a lot of women out there who cannot or will not perform sexually with her husband. I'm talk okay, I'm talking about husbands and wives right here. All right, they will not or they cannot perform sexually, and let's find out why. All right, and I'm gonna bring up some very real situations that some of you might be dealing with right now, or somebody you know. What else do you think they were going to say? Vancha says, I, I was, I wasn't expecting that. They, they, all of them almost said, What is he doing? That caused her not to want to perform. And I got it. I know exactly what it is. Okay. All right. So let's talk about this. Here's, here's the situation here. <laughs> here it is. Here it is. Okay. So uh, let's go with what they put on the wall. Let's go with that. Okay. Let's go with that. There are a lot of women out there who uh, can't perform sexually with her man for various reasons. Marty, it's good to see you here. Here's why. And let's see if we can put up a list here to talk about. Number one, uh, bad odor. The brother got bad odor. He stank. I don't know if she can, she know how to tell him that he stank, but he stank. Something wrong. He's got, uh, He's got some issues going on in his body, whether he, it's it's uh, whether he don't clean himself or where or there is a physical problem where he he smells. Mm -hmm. So she is uh, perturbed by that and turned off by it. So she will not give her body to this, this smelly man. That's number one. That's one thing, not number one in particular. Number two, he's stinking his attitude. 
uh, he don't uh, he don't treat her right. He don't treat her with respect. Mm -hmm. He is uh, he's always uh, bad mouthing her, especially in public. Yeah, there's something going on with uh, he just don't treat her like the queen that she is. So of course she gonna come home with an attitude she don't want. She don't want to give it to him. All right. So he's got an attitude. He doesn't treat her right. He's always uh, he's always angry. He, he, all these things. There's a problem. Okay. Uh, number three. He's cheating on her, and she believes he is, and she is afraid that he is going to give her a sexual uh, transmitted disease. Number three. Uh, chlamydia syphilis, gonorrhea, um, AIDS, uh, all these other stuff. So she is afraid that he might transmit something in her body so she don't trust him, even though he's saying, I ain't sleeping around, I ain't messing around. So she says, you know what, so that this won't happen, uh, I know women who don't even like when it's bedtime because she don't want, she just don't want him touching that's number three. Okay? Now, these are the things why it might be the man's fault. Number four could be he's not romantic. He doesn't talk harsh to her. He's just not romantic with her. And so, because he doesn't show this romance that he used to show when they were dating, or she sees her sister being romantically overtaken by her husband, she sees her best friend uh, being o romantically overtaken with her man, she comes home and none, none of that happens, so she doesn't give it to him. There's a Tyler Perry movie called, uh, shoot, what is that Tyler Perry movie? Uh, where the, the girl, the, 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 the girl and the boy gets married and uh, they got this apartment, but she works at a job, Temptation, Temptations I think it's called. And but she works at this job. She's having sex with her husband, but it's the same old sex over and over again. And then this man who comes to the job, he's a, he got money, you know, he's a CEO, and he comes to the job and he's always, you know, kind of hitting on her suddenly. And she's like, mm mm, she's faithful to her husband, but then he finally gets her attention by uh, telling her that he began to describe things on her body, her face, or the creases on the back of her neck and things like that, uh, that he noticed. And she like, mm, mm. So she went home to her husband to see if the husband noticed those same things. And the husband didn't notice any of that stuff. And all he said was, okay, let's have sex. And then it dawned on her. He ain't as romantic as that guy at the office. So before you know it, fast forward in the movie, they're having sex, okay? All right, so... Uh, the turn off of the the romance from the man causes the woman to not to be attracted to this man and before you know it she may stay in that, that marriage but she's out getting some nicky nicky from some other man okay or she may not be getting anything she may not be going out there cheating on him but she just has shut down physically she's done with sex forever so they just they're just partners. They just live at home. They're husband and wife. You know how many millions of people out there who are married? They're just husband and wife, and there is no sex whatsoever. Not because there's a physical problem. It's just that the romance has ceased, and they're done. They're like the ropers on uh, Three's Company. Is that what it is? The ropers upstairs didn't have sex. I remember watching that. Every time you turn around, she would come downstairs and talk to talk to the, the singles downstairs because she was like, Mr. Roper, he ain't doing nothing for me. So she didn't notice. Every time she talked, it was always some type of double entendre, some type of sexual talk because Mr. Roper wasn't throwing down. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, we got that out of the way. But I want to talk about... <clears throat> Uh, a few situations. I got brother. I got a couple of brothers and sisters who, not a couple, a whole lot of them, who every now and then they'll hit me up. They'll talk to me about some things going on in their relationship, and I figured, you know what? Let's talk about it. And I always ask them, "Can I use your story?" 
so that I can help the people out there. And they always say yes, you know. And I say I'll always protect your name. So I have a few. I have a, a, a maybe two or three stories to s tell you about to see why is it that women have shut down. Okay. Um, there is there is a man who did marry a woman who was a virgin. A man married, now this, this is two stories here. This one man married a woman who was a virgin, uh, and uh, as they got to, well, actually, as they were dating, come to find out she had um, had a trauma that happened in her life when she was young. She was maybe five, six years old. A trauma happened with her father. It wasn't sexual, it wasn't a rape, it wasn't a molestation, but there was a trauma that happened uh, with that girl, and she would have night terrors and traumas and night dreams and things like that that reminded her of that trauma so she started dating this man when she she was in her 20s and they uh, they got married but the trauma didn't go away mm -hmm. now she told him about this trauma and but he didn't know that the trauma was going to affect the relationship so they began to try and you know make the marriage work and they were having sex that was not a problem but then she began to become turned off by it suddenly just out of nowhere it turned off and then some issues set in so she started having physical problems in her body and so they went to the doctor and they discovered that there's the, there, there was an inflammation in her pelvic <clears throat> And around her bowel area, and and where, where the uterus, you know, where, where the, uh, it, it, things that happen supposed to happen in the inner start happening in the outer. All right, and so what happened? He be he began. They began to notice that every time they had sex, she was in pain. What do we do? We back, they so she says, well, we. They decided to go back to the doctor, and the doctor examined her and realized that she has endometriosis. Most women know what that is. Men hear that term and say it's just another medical term, but most women know what endometriosis is, and it causes severe pain in a lot of women. Well, unfortunately, there is no real cure for it, nor they don't even know where endometriosis comes from. Now, they do a lot of educated guesses on where it comes from, but they really don't. And there's no cure for it. So in some cases, some women have to go get put into early, uh, what they do, the little snip, snip, what have you. Um, yeah, that thing where the older women go through, they've been pushed into menopause and all that stuff, okay? There's another man who was with his woman. They decided to withheld until marriage, and they got married. But then when he went to penetrate her, he couldn't get inside of her. He couldn't go deep in her. It would. It, he can only put the tip in, and it would hurt her. She would be in a lot of pain. All right? And so she told him that she she had sex prior and she says that she did go to the doctor for this situation and the doctor said something to the fact that her her uh, her that area I'm looking for a medical term uh, needs to be cut open mm hmm yeah Karen you have a friend that suffers with it yeah uh-huh that area needs to be cut open uh, and there's surgery for people who are having problems having sex and need to be cut open. And if you and your husband would, uh, see, and here's the thing. The husband has to be a supportive partner so that she can feel comfortable going through such a surgery like that. A man that shows no concern is a turn off, smart mouth, stingy with money, never want to do anything. Yeah, yeah, I know, Evelyn. Okay, we talked about that earlier. <laughs> okay, we're going to leave the men alone. Now we're talking about the physical reasons why, okay? And so these, so the the husband <clears throat> uh, became a support for the wife as they went to the doctor to see how they could get this taken care of, so they both can enjoy sex. All right. Now these two situations here. <clears throat> now there's several situations like that I want to discuss. This third situation is the most 
uh, challenging for me. And I'm going to see if y'all can help me out with this, this next one here to see. And I think I know what it is. I think I know what it is, although I'm going to make an educated guess. Lab, what? Labia or the vagina, Deatra says. Depends on the condition. Yes. Deatra says, thank you for being here. I know if anybody know, you know. Working around all those medical people. Okay. This last situation is two people meet in a place. Okay. Uh, they're just, they're quite a few years apart. But the woman is a is a, a young woman, a middle-aged woman. Actually, she's a middle-aged woman, and she is a virgin. Okay. She is from a faith, a, a denomination that is very strict. Okay. Thank you for putting that up there, Demetri Pitts, Endometriosis.org. There is a, uh, and I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this before I finish this story. Let me tell y'all something. The church at large have destroyed any chances for many couples to enjoy sex. The church have single-handedly destroyed many marriages. Destroyed it. Now you're like, well, how? Because of the teaching and the taboo of sex. The stigma of sex with your husband. The church have destroyed the hope of especially men to enjoy sex with their wives. Even though they're doing it the right way they're married. Here's how. The Pentecostal Church, Church of God in Christ, Church of God, Apostolic, there might be a couple others. Those churches was rooted in strong doctrinal beliefs that sex is an immoral act when it's not with your husband or wife, which is true. But what they did was they taught so hard on fornication and adultery they taught so hard against it that they didn't give the young people a balance on the freedom and the joy of sex with your mates and this is why there are a lot of first ladies missionaries deacons wives elders wives apostle wives okay that are either in church or out they are miserable in their beds they're miserable or the husbands or those men in those positions they are miserable because of the wives who they have both of them ain't getting any sex so what's happening is they're finding sex outside because they are curious mm -hmm. the church shouldn't be in your bedroom amen lady Rochelle the church shouldn't be in your bedroom unfortunately when you are birthed in the church and all you know is that from birth, you take that wherever you go. When you go to the grocery store, you still are the church. When you go into the courtroom, you're the church. When you go into the, to the hospitals or the schoolhouse, you're still the church. So the belief is still in you. For someone to try to take that out of you could cause cognitive dissonance to happen and you act it out. I said all that to say that this next story I'm going to tell you we need to analyze it. Uh, but yet they had all these kids. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, Freeman. Now watch this. They had those kids, but there was no pleasure in it. They had these kids to procreate. So they took scripture literal by uh, uh, be fruitful and multiply, but there was no joy in the sex. Understand that? Sex, sex to them. There's no joy in it. It was a, it was a chore. Six months, six months to mind your business and six months to leave. Come on, come on, Laureline. Yeah, sad, but in many cases, this is true. I'm trying to tell y'all. Uh, some still believe that sex is for procreation only. That's my whole point, procreation only. So this, 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 young, this young lady meets up, meets up with this brother. She's a virgin. She come up under that strong teaching of the Pentecostal church. <clears throat> but what happens is she... She is absolutely 
Uh, she, uh, she is overtaken by this man. She's overtaken by him. And so she began to play the man role in a sense, the, the chasing role, uh, the, um, that role of that, that physical role. So she would get in this man's vehicle and unzip his pants and pull out his penis and then, and then have, have her way with it. And to his dismay, his amazement, like, wow, you, you actually doing this. You know, he was, he shocked at this. And then, uh, he figured, okay, that was a one-time shot, and then they go somewhere else, and before you know it, uh, they're in the drive through and then she does it again. They're somewhere at the house watching uh, TV or what have you. She puts a sheet over them uh, while they watch TV, and then she she pulls it out and does her little thing again, and he's like, wow, this is, you know, <laughs> I, you know, sex feels good. It does, okay? Again, rooted and grounded. In that religion, all of us have been rooted and grounded in some type of religion, and many of us have gone through that. I know I have. Y'all know, I tell my story, I'm very transparent. I wasn't that kind of guy like my, my parents or grandparents who could testify and say, we waited to marriage. That wasn't my testimony. I'm sorry. I ain't going to lie on the court of law. I had a lot, okay, I, and enjoyed it, and then I said I'd do afterwards. Y'all can tell you the lies all y'all want to. I ain't going to lie to you because I, I don't care about what y'all think about me. <laughs> okay? Yes. So, so here's, here's, here's the problem here. Okay? What about people in the, in the church having anal sex? Pastor tells them the bed, the, the bed is undefiled and that's okay because it's their choice. Karen Payne, listen. I'll go there in a minute. I'll go there. <laughs> cause not y'all. Mm -mm. I'll go there in a minute. So then, the last straw was that they're, they are in the, uh, she tells him to get in the back, and she pulls her panty off, and she tells him to penetrate. Okay? And he says, no. He says, I will not disrespect you out here like this. I, I can't do it can't do it so he stopped to a cold turkey all right pay close attention to what happens after this all right again I've got they gave me free will to uh, tell this story all right so Vancha he's he was divorced at the time he's got this new young lady they're falling in love uh, um, fellatio and and conalizas and stuff <laughs> is happening and then when it's time for penetration he stops it he says I'm not going to do it they get married after they get married she stops cold turkey no sex not just no sex no romance period remember all of the stuff they were doing in the car none of that she stopped and he's been trying and trying she just don't want it now some of you are saying she she uh she fell out of love or oh, i'm hearing she uh she's she's screwing somebody else or oh, you know it's usually it's usually this this physical yes the demetri pitts none no sex none cold turkey they've been married for years now none she has no desire for it okay now I always try to think outside of the usual box of social um, issues dealing with I don't like you or, or he or she's cheating or uh, she fell out of love I try to think past that and think inside the mind of a person why men and women do what they do. Yes, the answer that's an odd situation. Renetta, Renetta says lust. No, no. Mm -mm. No, I, I, no, that's not it. Okay, here's, here's what I think. Here's what I think that happened. What's happening here. This is why Psychology is so important. 
so important. Now, Annette just wrote a whole story here. I, I, I got to move on because it's a, it's a book you, you just wrote. Y'all read what Annette read. Just, uh, just posted that. The, to be able to study someone and looking outside of all this other stuff is very important. The taboo of mental uh, anguish is, has set itself in the church. The stigma of it that everything is looked to as a spiritual thing. So y'all throw oil on these people, tell them stop uh, cheating and lying and fornicating, and then you send them home to the same mental torment. I'm trying to tell y'all, she may need to get her hormones checked. And uh, uh, endo, yeah, chronologists can can do that. That's true. That's true. She may be depressed. Tiffany, come on. You see, now, now, now we're talking. Now we're talking, you see, because many of you are saying uh, she messing around. I'm like, why do it always have to be that? You see, here's the thing. She loves that man. She loves his dirty drawers. She loves him. I can see it. She loves him. They, they, both, uh, they both attend church, which don't mean nothing, but... You can see it in them. You can see it. They love each other. Um, but there are some terms I want to bring up, some medical and psychological terms I want to bring up, which have been a problem in thousands, possibly millions of women that some of you ain't thinking about. Everything ain't a holy oil issue. Sure ain't. The, the girl... This is, this is not their situation, but the, let's say a girl tells the mama that her boyfriend molested her. The mama does what many of you do. You blame the victim. What did you do to get for this man to do what he did? You wore this provocative skirt. Or the mama will go straight into denial and say, that man ain't touch you. You, you you hallucinating, right? These are the responses in many cases that the church has given people in church and caused them to be even worse off, all right? So sex has been taught in such a way that caused women mostly to be afraid of it. Not the men, the boys and the men, they're not, they're not so much afraid of it because there's something in their system that's driving them. But the women, grow up from little girls taught sexual purity so strong that they've not taught the 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 uh, the balance side of how when you get married hear how you can enjoy it they're afraid to teach the enjoyable part because they feel like if they teach the enjoyable part the, the woman or the girl gonna go out there and get it because uh, it's like passing out condoms mm-hmm mother's in denial <laughs> right Mother's in denial. Thank you, Matheny. So the whole aspect, the theology of passing out condoms says, I am giving this young lady uh, the freedom to go out there and have sex since I'm giving her the condom. I'm an accessory to this sin. So a lot of the mothers at the church who teach sexual purity in the church never teach how good it can be in marriage because in many cases those mothers ain't enjoying sex. Sex is supposed to be enjoyable. In marriage. Okay. So, there was a movie called American Beauty. Uh, Kevin Spacey. Anybody ever see that movie? Kevin Spacey? This movie came out in 1989, I believe it is. And Kevin Spacey was the father of this girl, this teenage girl. The teenage girl would bring her classmate over to the house okay Kevin Spacey the father started having a lustful thoughts for this little teenage girl anybody remember the movie there there is a Madonna whore image that some women have been taught or indoctrinated in uh, she possibly played the whore role before marriage and uh, and the Madonna role afterwards, the actress. I don't. I don't think this is the case. I don't think that's what's going on here. Nope. Uh, well, they can't talk about what they don't know about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, the actress says she saw the movie. 
uh, flowers you saw in the movie. Well, the movie, if you see the movie, you will notice that the, the teenage girl is also sashaying uh, and um, teasing the father. Mm -hmm. Renata? Yeah. The, she's teasing the father, teasing him, teasing him all through the movie until finally, towards the end of the movie, he finally uh, gets bold enough while they are alone, I think they might have been in the kitchen or somewhere, he finally gets her alone and he decides to have sex with this girl and she freaks out. She freaks out. She is so terrified because she's naked now. She's terrified. And he's like, but I thought you wanted me. She's like, I'm a virgin. And he's like, wait a minute, you're acting? You've been acting like this day after day with me? teasing me and talking about sex and all this stuff even around my daughter and what have you and now when it comes time for me to have my way with you you are afraid so when I was just when, uh, we was talking about this with the, uh, the, the, the uh, this brother who was telling me about this the, his situation right away I thought about American Beauty now but this American Beauty young lady story is a little different than the brother who was talking to me different. Here's what I think is going on. Number one, there are some people who live an asexual life. Asexual means they don't want male, they don't want female, they don't want sex at all. They're just asexual and they're happy to not live that life. But then you wonder, how do they become asexual? Why do they desire to be a sexual. There's people in the scriptures who are eunuchs. They are eunuchs by either design, God made them eunuchs, or they're eunuchs by choice, but it, it takes an anointing to be a eunuch. Trust me, that's if you're a man, okay? There are people, I know there are a couple of women in my church who've never been married, never had a man, never wanted a man, all right? They're just asexual, or they dedicated their lives to God. Now, I'm not saying this, this girl's situation, but I'm telling you, how did the asexual, how did the person get to a point where they are asexual? Well, here's the thing. There are a few terminologies here that I discovered talking to people because, again, I'm, I'm a, I love psychology. Uh, outside of the endometriosis situation, which causes pain, there was no pain that was described in when this brother was telling me about the reluctancy of sex from the wife. No. How could she go from... Uh, accosting him sexually in the car, in, in, in the truck, and wherever they are, in the drive through How could she go from that to shutting it all the way down? She's a virgin, and how could she be a virgin but want it so much? Was she lying to him about being a virgin? I don't believe she was lying. No. I don't, I don't believe she was lying at all. Okay? Here's the thing. There's a word called... Uh, vaginismus, vaginismus. I think that's the word. Vag, vaginismus. Let, let's ex, let's explore that word, vaginismus. I'm gonna bring up three words. Vaginismus, number two. Uh, genophobia, number three. Erotophobia. Those three words. Now, I'm not a professional. I have no degree in psychology. But I'm going to tell you that these three could possibly be the case because of what those three words mean. And there's a group of asexual people that are trying to be added into the LGBT community. I know. I heard about that, Deatris. Okay. Vaginismus is, now, now here's a scenario between the two, okay? Two people could have vaginismus, but... Is that what they are? It affects them two different ways. All right. Here's here's the first way. One young lady can have vaginismus and be able to insert things in her vagina, meaning uh, douche products or um, uh, or that the the pads, or she can even have an exam by her doctor and it does not affect her. All right. Um, but penetration does. 
it hurts her. All right. Uh, that's one young lady. The other young lady who has this vaginism is she can't take anything. It's even difficult for her every every uh, that one time in a month to insert these pads because it it hurts her. Okay, all right. When he didn't enter her, maybe it caused a mental block and she shut down. Karen Payne said, now I like when y'all talk like that. I like when y'all talk like that. You see, here goes the examination. This is very important. This could, this could be helping somebody. It can be physical or psychological or both. The actress, that's where I'm going. I'm sorry. Yeah, I said that. Um, so, um, as I studied vaginismus some time ago, I... I notice in the discussion because I read uh, the uh, the APA a lot and, and a lot of these medical websites a lot of I read a lot of it and try to I don't stop at a word that I don't I mean I don't continue to read over a word I don't know if there's a word I I don't know I keep I read the definition of that word and sometimes it takes me two hours to read one paragraph because I've got to slow it down I need to, I need to before I walk away from that paragraph I need to know it all. It come, come to find out, Karen, that some doctors who are not sensitive to the psych, the mental state of a woman, always thinking about the physical aspect, the physiological aspect of it, so they would misdiagnose vaginismus as being physical, when in many cases it is psychological. I was blown away by that study. Uh, last week I was on the Annette Harris show and we were talking about uh, ACE, which is Adverse Childhood Experiment. Okay? A adverse Childhood Experiment. And it is an amazing study, but many people don't even know what the study is. It's really dealing with the abuse that happened to a person when they was a child. Some type of trauma, traumatic event happened as a child which caused a person to be the way they are at the age 50, 55, 60 years old. Okay, it could be anything. It could be even how our parents beat us because we did something wrong. So there was a beating process that could have caused an adverse childhood experiment to happen. Okay, it doesn't have to mean that it was any, a, a molestation. It, couldn't, it doesn't have to mean it was some type of rape or something like that. Uh, we could have seen someone killed on the street, especially here in Chicago. Okay, uh, adverse childhood. She says events, and, and, and many people, many websites call it experience. It's the same thing. All right, uh, uh, if, if parents are too overbearing, that could cause ACE in the child. If a, if a, um, if a one of the parents might be mentally ill, that could cause ACE in the child. Yes. And then what happens is when the child gets older, physical things start happening to the child. Uh, uh, I, I see if I'm in my 50s, I'll start having uh, heart disease, uh, 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 CAD, and all, all, all kind of things. It starts, it starts showing up in, in the physical. All right? So... Vaginismus in many women is psychological. It's psychosomatic. The fear of sex causes her body to react to the fear. And it's almost like her vagina and that all that area close up or pulse up or do something to her. It causes the, uh, an adverse effect of pain. So when the man reaches to touch her, she's painful, and it could be up here. Now, there's treatment for it, but we'll have to talk about that further as, as we go along. Maybe not tonight. Okay, Vantra, I'm trying to tell you, this is stuff that we don't talk about. The church can't talk about it. They either don't know, they don't want to know. They don't want to talk about sex. It's a stigma on that. It's taboo. You don't want to talk about this stuff. Okay, it's always abstain from sex, abstain from sex. That's it. But you never told them the other side of how you can be pleasurable in it. Yeah, she just shuts down. Karen, so Karen, you were on you you were on it earlier by saying, notice they were in the car and she said, penetrate me. He says, I'm not gonna do it. 
that right there, if he had gave her her wish, I'm wondering what would have been the effect. Now, y'all put on your psychological brain. What would have been the effect if he did penetrate her? Would she had rejected it? Would she had felt pain? Or would, would, or would they have been successful with it? And then now, today, they would be having a pleasure in their marriage as sex is concerned. Now, here's the part I didn't tell you. They went to the doctor to get an exam because he was concerned. And when the physician went to give her a pelvic exam, she screamed. She would not let him examine her and they wind up leaving. They wind up leaving the hospital. And so to this day, they don't know if it was if it's a physical situation or not. Or is it mental? So he began to ask her questions about her sexuality. And she has confirmed over and over again that I love you. And if you ever leave me, I don't know what I would do. I believe she loves him. It took it took Obi years before they what uh as smitted is that a typo medically how menstrual once a month was a real problem for some women physically brought on by the psychological tr uh, Diane Jones yeah the question is through the through why was she ready for intercourse prior to marriage but was not able to after the vows I think I just mentioned that I believe it would have been the same effect Annette is saying yeah so it it there is a there is a torment going on in the minds of all of us now. Number one, she wanted the sex from him. She kept attacking him sexually. When they got married, it all stopped. Now, as he explained it to me, he does he feels he feels and I feel too that she wanted him so bad. Now, here's the thing. She wanted him so bad that she was willing to go through the process of putting her fears aside. Now, this is me talking. She was willing to go through the process of putting her fears aside so that she could uh, uh, obtain her goal of getting this man. Yeah, performance anxiety. Sometimes it's, it, is, it isn't actually sex that we fear at all instead we may worry about our own ability to pledge yes and I thought about that as well and you, we can't throw that out uh, uh, Pitts I'm agreeing with you we can't it's, we can't just cross that out because you that could be correct the two words I brought up earlier was genophobia and erotophobia now those two words are used interchangeably but they actually are two different things uh, genophobia actually is the fear of sexual intercourse. So you got you got you got the fear. Here's the thing. Vaginismus sets in, and then genophobia sets in, and then the end result is living an asexual life. Does this make sense to anybody? Sounds like there are some issues physically and mentally. Yet, yeah, Wes, that's what we're talking about. Vaginissima is present because of her religious upbringing. I believe, in my heart of hearts, that's where it started, with her religious upbringing. When I read the study on vaginismus and genophobia and erotophobia, it said that in many cases, it has a lot to do with religious upbringing. Yeah, but the question is, if she was a virgin, she wouldn't know that she was not able to penetrate. Yep, and I thought about that too, Deatrice. But so, if she was a virgin, she took a chance and says, I want you, just like that little young girl on American Beauty. I've seen women who are virgins go over and beyond the call uh, uh, removing 
of removing. And I hope that train didn't derail. Oh, that poor guy lost his bumper. <laughs> I feel bad for him. Lost his bumper. Um, most times than not, when a woman is a virgin, that experience should be handled delicately by the male where the pain now becomes enjoyable. Yes, I f okay, here we go. Thompson. All right. I remember talking, and I've talked to so many people down through the years, that this, and I've had, I've done this show here, Romance in the Park, where there was a young lady who could not have sex from behind, doggy style, with her man. She couldn't do it. There was a, there was a pain that happened, and I think she said her uterus was upside down or something like that. So the actress helped me with that. All right? Her uterus was upside down, so she couldn't have sex doggy style. <clears throat> Uh, now y'all know this is not family hours so tell the, the kids to go to bed so every time her husband would mount her she would feel pain to, and that was his favorite position so she had to um, so he just he couldn't do it anymore so they talked to me <laughs> like am I the love doctor or what they said yeah you do these romance and fox stuff and we've been hearing about this stuff so you need to tell me. I said, well, first of all, y'all need to y'all need to seek your doctor. That's the first thing you need. You need to really seek your doctor. But let me tell you what I have discovered. I have discovered that some things are physical, and some things are psychological. But through my studies, I says now you go to the doctor and see if that's the case with your fallopian. I mean, with your uterus being upside down. What apparently you know is upside down because that's what you said that the doctor said. I said, but. Just because the doctor says something don't mean you got to always take it as we can't do something. See, the doctor could be right, but that don't mean you need to stop something because the doctor said it. Some things are psychological. See, fear set in when the doctor says, this is why this is happening. So here's what you need to do, man. You can make this, this pleasurable thing um, uh, more easier for both of y'all to enjoy. I says, you need to learn her body. He said, well, yeah. I said, you went to school. All you had to do was go to high school. And you get the, those books where it had those see-through transparent bio biology books with the see-through transparent papers in them. Okay? Where it had the schematic of the body. You remember that? Yeah, I said, look, look in there. Look for the woman's body. Not, not so much yours. Look for the woman's body. And look at the schematic of her tubes and what have you. I says, now, and then see where the penis goes when you penetrate her. Look and turn that book up. And this is what I told him. Turn that book upside down and act as if her uterus is upside down. And now look at the penis and see what it does. Now, when you with your woman, uh, put your finger there. And you, you go in there and put your, insert your finger. When you with her, and I, I told her this in front of her, and find out those spots and ask her, does this hurt? Does this feel good? Turn it over there and does this hurt? Does this feel good? I said, now you insert your penis. Do the same thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, after you get to doing that, y'all do a doggy style and you find out how far you can go with that position to where it stops hurting or if it continues hurting, then you know that you got a, you got a problem there. And they actually went home and tried it. Well, that was a few years ago, and let me tell you, they still are telling me, thank you, Jesus, for that advice, because not only does he like it, that's actually now her favorite position. Why? Like Thompson said, there is, a, there is mostly a time where the man have to understand that he's got to be the big support in helping the woman through this stuff. Uh, Wes says, uh, yes, it could be her learning behaviors. However, love and affection to your spouse is necessary, meaning pleasing to your spouse. Yeah. Uh, Pitt says, this is from the website. Uh, what? Very personal, cultural. Yep. Personal, cultural, and religious. Uh-huh. Although many religions and societies from on sexual intercourse accept. Yep. I knew it. 
Uh, Deatra says, yes, inverted uterus is common, but that was her anatomy. Many women with flipped uteruses can have doggy style. Come on. Um, see, I ain't even read this. I ain't even read it until yet. Yeah. Joe, you missed a lot. Did they pay you for your advice? <laughs> yeah. They paid me, all right. They paid me respect, I guess. Thompson says, it is a must for a man to know the body, and likewise, a woman should know her man's body for the... Come on. That's my whole point. That's my whole point. She needs to allow the doctors to examine her regardless uh, uh, to her fear. That's something she needs to do, especially for health reasons. Wes, and that's what I, I noticed I said that when they asked me the question. I said, seek your physician. Meanwhile, while you're seeking, let's try this home remedy. So the doctor was right. The uterus was flipped. But the home remedy remedied it. Yeah. Yes, got to be supportive through the process, the flower says. You got to be supportive through the process or you're going to find yourself being torment in the flesh. She ain't giving it up. So what happens? A lot of men, what they do, they revert to pornography. And it's free. You ain't got to pay for it anymore. There's no more back rooms at the them dark uh, VHS stores. There's no more back rooms. Like, no, those stores are shut down now. All you got to do is turn on your computer and you got free porn. So he reverts to that, but that part is empty. To most men, it's empty. So then when it becomes empty, what does he do? He go out there and find him a woman. There's a whole bunch of women out there who are really willing and ready to give him whatever he wants. Trust me on that. Should she be examined before they are married? Agape, well, you came a little late. Uh, she may not have known. Okay, uh, that's exactly what happens. Then it goes outside the home. There we go, Wes, okay? So here's the thing. Here's the thing, y'all. Y'all ready for this? This is why a lot of couples have sex before they get married. Yep. They hear these stories and they say, I ain't going through that. I'm going to find out before we get married whether he or she can perform. That's why a lot of them do it. Now, I'm not telling y'all to do it before marriage because that would be, that would be uh, hypocritical and horrible for a, a preacher to tell you to do that before, before marriage. But I'm telling you, this is why they do it. I can almost guarantee you that most of the people sitting in your church if they are uh, married and they're in their 30s, 40s, and 50s, they had sex before they got married. I bet you. I bet you. Now, somebody on here going to say, it wasn't not me and my baby. Mm -mm, we believe in the Lord. It goes, mm -mm. yeah, uh huh. Yeah, that's your testimony. But a whole bunch of the folk that's sitting on your bench. They got nasty. I'm trying to tell y'all that. They tested the waters, Karen said. I know. I know that's dangerous. But they doing it. This show ain't about what's right or wrong. It's about reality. Some of the brothers are coming to church and say, smell my finger. I don't care what y'all think about me. I'm telling y'all. They should talk about it uh, before they married based on what experience they had before. They should. Mm hmm I'll tell them too, Joe. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. But that was good advice. Who said that, Agape? They should talk about it. But how can they talk about it, especially the woman who come up under an apostolic, cogent uh, atmosphere, and you couldn't, you're not supposed to talk about that kind of stuff? Fear set in. Xenophobia set in. Erotophobia set in, and then uh, vaginism is set in, and now we got a we got a, a psychological problem, and now the man can't enjoy sex because she's she's going through all of these uh, mental uh, anguishes and things like that. She needs more than a doctor; she needs a psychologist. She needs 
mental help. Well, she can't get it because she's a part of a church that don't believe in it. So these husbands stay at home and suffer, and what happens? She stay at church. She's these women are becoming evangelists and missionaries and all this stuff, and they stay. They they love the church. Their life is the church, and they go home and can't please their husbands. So what happens to that house? What's going on in that house? It's 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 torment to him, especially if he still got uh, healthy sperm and a help help healthy. Uh, he got a healthy level of testosterone and a libido and all this stuff. You know how hard that is to have a new wife and she can't perform? Man, let me tell you, my wife, my ex-wife had endometriosis. And I was in my 20s. Can you imagine the pain and suffering not only she went through, I went through. I know a young lady who wanted and found her partner was small, 30 days later, the marriage was annulled. Yep, there it goes. Fear is a demon, yeah. Now that's the problem with churches, they have no one to educate the people, no. Or she needs a major evaluation. It's necessary to save her marriage. Her husband can't live like that for years to come. That's unhealthy for him. West, come on, you better teach. So the men are going through this agony. Now, ladies, you gotta be a little easier on these brothers because some of the comments, I'm not talking about here, but I mean early on the comments, right away y'all nailed into the men. You didn't, even, you didn't even understand. You didn't even take out the time to evaluate every scenario. You went straight to the only one available scenario and that is this, he disrespects them. Fancha, I'm trying to tell you. They went right there. 99.99% of the women on the wall went right to the man. And none of them went to the sister and said, let's examine some situation. Could there have been an ACE situation happening? Could there have been some tr childhood trauma going on? Could there be uh, a fear of sex? Could, was you molested? Was there a rape going on? Did your father touch you inappropriately? Is there fear? Was Did you come up in, in, a, in a hardcore apostolic upbringing where they put the fear of you that you can't touch a man? And they didn't tell you about the pressures of having sex with your husband? And there you are mentally in a state of fear and torment that if this man pull out his penis is too thick and it's too long and you are going to shatter my vagina and so that's what happens in a lot of women I can't tell you when I was back in the day that's what I would hear it you, you're gonna shatter me I'm like you haven't even seen it yet yeah but when I got up close to you <laughs> you got excited and I felt it and so you're gonna shatter me and I'm like oh I get it you come up under that that right there. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of women out there have this fear of that ain't gonna fit. It's not gonna fit. So the man's job is to talk, talk to her. I'm not talking about you people who are single, and, but but if, even those of you who are single, you need to talk about sex. You need to talk about it if you ain't doing it. I'm talking about talk about it. All right. I'm talking about you saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, that with a mind of burning fire, and, and pray that I be the one that the Lord calling for in the last evil day. Yeah, you, you need to talk about sex and stop being so spiritually minded that you're no earthly good. Talk about it. What is wrong with you? That's what the problem is. So you, you won't have it, which is good, but you won't even talk about it, which is bad. Then you get married, now y'all talk about it. And then it's like, uh-oh, oops, oops, this ain't working, oops, wait a minute, I thought you was a woman. <laughs> now, as funny as that may sound, there's too many people that discovered that their wives were men. Now, I know that is the, the extreme, but that happens depending on what city you live in, especially. Uh, men are not the problem. They are only acting on what God has put in them. Yeah, but conversation is needed due to the various backgrounds. Come on, agape. Absolutely. That's how you learn, Demetria. Hey, David Brock, blessings. Bobby, what, you what did I stumble upon, man? You better leave, Bobby. Bobby, Bobby, you better leave, man. Some people are so religious. I know. Wes, what are you saying? 
is it Nisa or Nisa? Nisa? Is that how you say your name, Nisa? Because, you know, when I don't know how to pronounce a person's first name, I say their last name. Ask El Elishima. El Elishima. You see what I'm saying? I just I just say Tekoa. Um, something, something deep down within has her stuck. I live with health issues. Ovarian cancer twice, lupus, and some more stuff, but I know my husband has needs, desires, that part of being his helpmate. That's good stuff, Wes. Wes, that's good stuff. Have we not read the book of Solomon? I did a whole teaching on Solomon on that bench right there last year. Go on my, uh, in my uh, YouTube channel and see where I talked about the book of Song of Solomon. I taught it right there. And I talked about what you need to discuss. From the first chapter, they were talking about sex. From the very first chapter. Uh, well, tonight ain't a period class. So WAPI WW. <laughs> but helping the viewing audience. Come on, Vancha, it's very important. Uh, many people are not honest with their partners about what's going on, and it's not fair to lure them in and not tell them up front with what's what they are dealing with, but then again, she probably felt he wouldn't have married her. Yep, before the vows is the time to discuss it. Yep, Lady Michelle, there it is. There it is. There it is. Because next week, I'm bringing Lady Michelle out here in this park, and she is, and I, and I told her tonight, I saw her at church tonight, I told her, you're bringing your butt out here with me, and you're going to talk about uh, the uh, how to cope with a with a spouse who's who's battling with uh, physical problems, physical issues, and things like that. How to how to be supportive to them. Lady Lady Rochelle is a cancer survivor, right? And we'll have her right out here walking with me, like I've done before. On these other others others who walk with me. Walk with me out here uh, this coming week, Lady Michelle, because this could be part two. Because again, you gotta, man, y'all gotta talk about this stuff. You gotta talk about this stuff. So it's very important. So, sisters, stop being so. Uh, don't let media and today's world's affairs cause you to think out, think like they think. Think like, as a matter of fact, the world seems to be smarter in this than the church they talk about this stuff the world do they talk about it and the funny thing about that is the church gave the world doctors and medicine you like huh yeah they did the universities and stuff like that the church gave that to them yeah you like, huh yeah mm hmm the church did. Look at the name of all these hospitals. <laughs> they all got Catholic names, don't they? St. Mary, St. Luke, St. <laughs> <Saint> John. <laughs> all these names. The church gave the world doctors and nurses and medicine. We did that. Uh, you whispering like you ain't free. <laughs> Juneteenth happens. <laughs> I'm whispering because... I'm in a mixed neighborhood. It's white, blacks, and Hispanics, and it's 11 o'clock at night. How about that? <laughs> Joe Hill says, if, if you marry for better or for worse, it behooves you to know up front what the worst is. It's called due diligence. Yeah, Joe. Yep. I want to say something about that, but I'm not. But most have not and probably did not see that show. You might think about reposting it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, folks need to know everything in the book. Yeah, Thompson, I have, I have to post it on my wall. That's good stuff. Presbyterian Hospital. See what I'm saying? Presbyterian. Uh, um, they've got Lutheran hospitals. Okay, and all these Saint this and Saint that hospitals. The church gave the world hospitals. Church. What's the Pentecostal church doing? Hmm? What y'all doing? How could y'all have walked away from something that you gave the world? And the Bible gives you hope. As it pertains to medicine. 
uh, Jesus was called a, a, a bomb. B-A-L-M. There is a bomb in Gilead to heal your soul. St. Francis, Avanti said, the church gave the world the answer to their sickness. You walked away from it. Come on. How was it, how was it possible? Dimitri Pitt says, filling the hospitals. Yeah, y'all gave the church the hospitals, but you filling it with all kind of uh, problems and issues, stuff that you can't talk about in church, preventive discussion in church. So instead of talking about the preventive measures, you ignore it, and then you get sick, and then you go to them same hospitals that the church created, and many died. And their sicknesses could have been prevented, but the world is out there educating themselves on preventive measures and everything, social issues, mental issues, dietary issues, educational issues, literacy issues. The world is educating themselves on it. The church ain't talking about it. You just go to church and speak in some unknown tongue as the Spirit gives them utterance, and you raise a tithe and an offering, and then the preach word is going to go forth as more talk, talking about money, prosperity, and you want a magic bean to pop up in your church and a beanstalk pop out of that. Uh, that, that riches and wealth is in my house and you just uh, speak those things and be not and all this uh, stuff that wasn't even talking to you God says I speak those things and be not not you and y'all are giving all of this, these nursery rhymes in a sense for the lack of a better phrase and then you go home and wonder hey, wait a minute why he sick why he got he, my daddy died of this, these diseases and illnesses um, my mom is traumatized. My brothers and sisters are going through the ACE and, and molestation and, and this and that is happening in the house. How is that possible? We go to church and and, and, with, and we're hearing the, the gospel of Jesus Christ and we come out and by his stripes we're healed and everybody in my house is sick. But the, my neighbors next door never been sick. They ain't never sick. <laughs> They're running up and down. When I go to church on Sundays, I see white folk out there running. they jogging up and down Evanston and Skokie Boulevard just dro drogging on my way to church. They didn't, you know what? Many of them been to church. They went to early mass and then they went home and changed clothes, if they changed clothes, because they don't wear suits like we do. And they went out there, put air in their bikes and went out there and went biking, uh, roller, rollerblading, and went out there jogging and, and running and all kind of stuff for their health. And they go home and eat healthy things. And we, in the church, I'm gonna drive and shoot, look at them, I drive. <laughs> drive and shoot, look at them. And then go and find a chicken shack and eat all of the almost unhealthiest stuff. And we get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then we in that hospital, St. Francis, St. John, St. Luke, Presbyterian, St. Mary, for all kind of problems that was preventive but you spend all your time at church. Now that's a darn shame. So you ain't talking about the mental state of your brother and sister, and then they hook up, get married, and now they can't enjoy sex, something that God give to them, not just for procreation. So the church is thinking like the old, old Bible way of procreation. God gave it to you for your enjoyment you husbands and wives, not just to have babies. Y'all thinking about owning. There's a religion that believes that you gotta, you're not supposed to pull out. God gonna kill you. It's called onanization, I think it's called. And where the brother was, he was a Jew, Jew. He was supposed to impregnate his brother's wife. The brother died, so in the Jewish uh, Mosaic law, you're supposed to take your brother's wife as your wife. And impregnate, impregnate her so, so that the lineage continue. He decided not to do that and pulled his penis out and, and spilled it on the ground and God had to kill him. So the church saw that, got scared. And that's why we're having a lot of the problems we have today because we have taken the Old Testament and practiced it to ourselves and took it all literal to ourselves and our lives today and told Jesus, eh, eh. He didn't say he got rid of the law. He says he fulfilled it so the law was in him. So if you follow him, you don't have to worry about the law. You follow him in Christ. But what y'all did was you said, eh, 
I'm going to follow all this stuff in the Leviticus and everything else. And, and you ain't following it all because many of you are lying if you think you're following the law because some of you women who are going to the, to the, the church on your menstrual cycle, you are supposed, uh, they're supposed to do something to you. You are considered unclean. All right? All kind of stuff was happening. Nocturnal emissions and men having uh, wet dreams and stuff like that. And, and then going into public and what happened, shaking hands and stuff like that. You're still unclean. And, well, men and women are having sex uh, 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 Sunday morning and then going to church. You And you didn't do a ceremonial wash. you unclean. You're eating catfish and shellfish and all this other kind of fish. All right? you considered unclean. All this, all this stuff y'all say we... So the church is messed up, screwed up. You, you're so bipolar, manic, depressed, and all kinds of stuff because you're taking scripture out of context. And Jesus was like, why did I even come? Why, 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 what was the whole purpose of me coming if you ain't gonna follow me? You following the writ, the script, the Torah, and all that stuff, and I'm telling you, I am he. So you ain't talking about that stuff because you come up under that old, old way, and Jesus told you that you dying because of your tradition. Why sit ye here and die? So the husband is at home burning in his flesh. So what the Apostle Paul says, he says it's better to marry than to burn with, com with not compassion, but with passion. You got sexual urges to say, go ahead and get married. But that one scripture has caused problems in a lot of people's lives because people got married and was not were never in love with each other. They just got married for sex. Now they're in it for sex and they get the sex, but after sex is over, they don't even like each other. So that scripture has screwed a lot of y'all. <laughs> darn if we do, darn if we don't. Yeah, natural first. Even Jesus took care of the natural needs of the people before there they was spiritual. Come on. I believe the church, uh, the church is scared because that may interrupt what the preachers uh, want to do sexually, lust in the church. Our unhealthy keeps us going back to the church giving. Yeah, that's true. That's true. In some cases, not all cases, not exclusively, but, but you could be right. As they always say, oh, what you, what you uh, won't do, someone else will. Yes, West. Whew. Lord, have your way in this marriage. Heal her and remove whatever it is causing her to draw back from her husband. Give her the desire to be pleasing unto him. Then I love that. Good stuff. Uh, uh, have you have you covered everything on this one program? Make it plain. <laughs> Thompson, I think I done covered everything I could possibly cover on this program. You're making jaws drop. I know. I'm trying to, man, listen. That's why these preachers don't like me. That's why when I go to these churches, they will not. They will not ask me to say words. They won't because they think I talk like I'm going to talk like this at their church. No, I don't talk like this. At, I went in Rome. I do what the Romans do. I don't offend folk in their homes, but I'm out here in the park. This is Sirsville, all right? This is my, I'm the mayor of this, this here town right here, and I talk this way to help folks. When I get to your house, I'm going to say, yes, sir, yeah, no, ma'am, yes, ma'am, and I'm going to eat your chicken and go and, go and leave, all right, and uh, spew my my uh whatever i got on social media own and spill the seed uh but people misunderstand it was about disobeying not sex agape i just explained that uh, bobby miller says what about uh being equally yoked uh, you got some devilish people in the church male or female yeah the equal yoke thing we know that is it's all about the oxen it's all about putting the yoke on the oxen and putting them side by side and if one ox is taller than the other they're not equally yoked they, they and they're they trying to tread out the corner, but it's, they all, it's going to mess up the person who's, trying, who's riding, all right? So they're unequally yoked. So that is, that is a farm, uh, uh, that is an agricultural term uh, that was used to describe how we are in the spirit realm. Many of us have married someone who was unequally yoked with each other. I know two people who are church of God in Christ who married each other, and they are unequally yoked. Trust me. They are. You like how is that possible? They they the same spiritually. They're not on one accord. All right. So whatever you decide to do in your bedroom is up to you. If you married folks, you do what you do. Enjoy yourself. The bed is still undefiled. I know somebody talked about anal sex. Somebody talked about this and that. Listen, and you ain't got to be specific. Just don't bring a third party in that room. Don't bring in pornography. That's that's third party as well. You don't need those kind of helps. All right. It's just you and that and her and him. Fine. If you need some help, go ahead. You can bring a toy in there. That's fine. I, I ain't against toys. Listen, go to Toys R Us and have your way. <laughs>
Uh, they closed most of them down. Did they go bankrupt? Okay, anyway. You create your own Toys R Us and enjoy yourself in your bedroom. Close the door and you don't tell us what you're doing. It's undefiled. Do what you do. Just don't bring no third party in there. We don't believe in... Uh, Menager and her toys, okay? And sex is our number one misconception in the church, and more people are falling into temptation because we uh, don't talk openly. We don't talk about this. You're right, Agape. Too many first ladies have hit on me, all right? Too many elders' wives have hit on me. And I said, you know what? That way I ain't going. I ain't going down that route. What is what is pastor not doing for you for you to be hitting on me? I can't understand how what you hit on me, and that's the pastor right there. Is he not throwing down? How is this possible that you're miserable in your room and your in your home sexually and you married to the pastor? That tells me something is wrong. Either he is lying from the pulpit and he doing all of this marriage counseling. What could he possibly tell in these people who he's counseling in his office and he ain't taking care of his wife at home? That's a problem. That's a problem. Bobby, that's a problem. Bobby, whatsoever you do, you got to make it funky. You got to make it funky, Bobby. And the pastors ain't making it funky. That's the problem. So we got to talk about this. We got to talk about this. So you go ahead and share this show with the, with the, your pastors, apostles, evangelists, and teachers, and all these kind of folk because they ain't doing their work. And too many women at the church. Why do you think it's a harem of women at the church after one man? Why do you think it's 20, 50, 30, 90 women chasing after that one man? Because the brothers, the brothers, the brothers, something, something going on with the brothers. They say it's a shortage of men. Well, last I checked, uh, the World uh, Federation of How Many People on the Earth.com, it's, it's almost half and half. There are more just as many men are born than there are women, all right, in the world. And then in America, it's pretty much the same. Just as much men is born as women. It's not really as much a shortage of men and women as far as bodies is concerned. It's just depending on where you are, where you're hanging out, where you're going to work, where you do for extracurricular activities, where, where you go to work out, where you go to eat, all right? So you do the same thing, cycles over and over again, Monday through Monday, and you don't see different men. So you just go and see the same men. You at church with the same dudes. Either he married or he is the biggest cheater in the church or he is homosexual. So you looked at that and then cursed the church at large and say, I don't want no church man because your experience at your church or those other three churches you left because you a church hopper looking for men. You at the church for the wrong reason. See, that's what your problem is. So women are always talking about these men ain't no good, blah, blah, blah. But every time you turn on Facebook, you see these, these people, uh, one man on his knee, uh, asking this woman to marry him. Every time you turn around, we, we's married now, I's married now, Hopper married me, and all this stuff. And you be like, wow, I, man, I've been looking for a man all this time. And then every time I turn around, sister so-and-so, and this sister here got a man. Apparently, ain't no shortage of men. Where they, where they hanging out at, opposed to where you hanging out at? You can't be cursing the church because you can't find a man that's why this all these church hurt uh, uh posts was going on back and forth back and forth back and forth some of them were really funny others were a little too serious to be funny and y'all uh, uh, blaming the church for your hurt and you got hurt everywhere you go it's people hurt not just church not church hurt it's people hurt wherever people are they gonna hurt you hurt people hurt people that's just the way it is it's like that wood and that's the way it is I think I better go because this went a little too long. You know, that is taboo in the church. That's why so many fornication. The pastors are freaking every <laughs> every other woman, but they're wise. Okay, I ain't going to say that to all the pastors, but it, it's, it's too much going on. Women need to be more open when dating. Yes, you need to be more open. Ridiculous, a bunch of women after one man, Deatrice. I know this is why some of us don't date men in the church. I know, Lady Rochelle. Hopefully when when I get married, she's not all used up. <laughs> Ain't no shortage of men, y'all. Ain't no shortage. Stop blaming the church for your experience with a couple men who wronged you. Please stop. Stop doing it. My goddaughter just got proposed to in the park like this a good man proposed to her and I celebrated it celebrated it you hear me lady Rochelle you was there 
Because if it wasn't for you, he would not have been able to do that with her. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So don't tell me there's a shortage of men when our daughters are finding these beautiful men who are going to take good care. And when I say fine, he finding her. I get that. Uh, Karen says, no men in the, in the churches here, mostly women. The men are married that are, <laughs> well, Karen, I'm trying to tell y'all. Y'all need to get out a little bit more. Grateful, Bishop, I commend you for opening this and honesty. Bless you, bless you. Thank you, sir. All right, well, the 21 that are you are left, hit the share button or not because there's some people who can't take this type, this type of teaching. Can't do it. There might be some children on your wall or some family members who say, hey, hey, you post that mess and garbage on your wall. They're going to call it garbage because their relationship might be garbage. They're going to call it garbage because they go to that church that don't teach this kind of stuff, so they're going to call it garbage. But you just learned something today, I hope. All right? I thank God for my pastor when I was coming up because he taught us about oral sex and anal sex and, and missionary position and all this stuff. He talked about it. He didn't tell us what was right, what was wrong. He had an open discussion about it. A church God in Christ preacher. When I was, it was in the 1980s and I said, this is the greatest uh, church service I ever been to. <laughs> That was the greatest church service I had ever attended. Mm -hmm. He talked about all that sex. He said, we ain't having Bible study today. We're going to talk about sex because it got too many of you old folk around here trying to tell the young folk what they can and cannot do. Uh, and you ain't telling them what they can do when they get married. That water is, is warm. Yucky. You ever had warm water out here when you want some cold water? Okay. All right, all right, got to go, y'all. I think I talked to these, uh, these people who live here. I talked them to, 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 to they, now they're calling the cops. Says, There's this black guy who come around twice a, twice a week. <laughs> He's trying to help that old lady who's calling the cops on the black folk uh, police. There's a black guy who's helping a whole bunch of other black people in the park. <laughs> Call me back up. Uh, there, are, there are some great men out there. We need to get out and experience beyond the church walls, but still stay in the will of God. Lady Rochelle, that's good stuff. That's good. What a quote. What a quote preacher. <laughs> uh, we're looking for that tall, dark, and handsome man instead of the man who can bless you. Uh, we got to look past the service, but still ask God for what they want. Yes. That's good. I'm walking to my car, by the way. It ain't like I started the show all over again. I'm just walking to my car. All right, so I figured I'd talk to you while I'm walking to my car. Ladies, listen, as I close, because I'm Kodrick, so I can close three times. Um, I, think, um, I think there is a resolve to this. Here it is. Lately, I've been talking to a whole lot of people who are tired of church. Hear me. If you don't hear me, if you didn't hear nothing tonight, hear this because most of my listeners are the church goers. The church is failing us slowly but surely. People of all ages are now tired of the church. They're tired. They're done. They're walking out of these churches in droves. And they feel that the church have taken them so far and now they're done. And some of these people who were staunch or uh, church goers, they stopped going. They're done. So it's your job now to train your, t your children, raise them up, teach them in the home. Don't rely on the church to do it no more. That church right now is dying or dead. That church that I just mentioned, that, that the church that used to be the, the beacon light of the community, you see that light, that light right there? Well, today's church is that darkness right there, okay? They're done, they're done. You used to be able to get everything you need from the church. The civil rights movement started and was effective because of the church. When a person got out of jail, the, the, the penal system gave them over to the church to take care of the rest. The church took care of the housing uh, and food 
okay, the, the pantries. The church did that. The church taught me how to walk and talk and write out checks. They, they, used, to, they used to have a, a posterity classes where they would put books on our heads and we would walk with the books on our heads. I didn't learn that in school. I learned that in church. Cooking classes was done, guess where? Not just in school, but in church. They taught us decency and how to treat the young ladies in church. Yeah, that's the church we come up under. And so we had Sunday school and then, of course, worship. But during the week, it was family time. We did everything together in the church. That church, in many of your communities, died. So now, who needs to pick that up? The parents. You should have never left it. So go back to raising your child. And if they decide never to go back to church, at least they know God because you taught it to them. Because the millennials ain't going to your church no more. They're done. They're only going to these churches that are, seem to be all the young folk are running to these churches. And you look at them churches and they all look alike. In many cases, you don't even know who the pastor is. You don't know him because he's sitting among the people. <laughs> and that's not a bad thing. Yep. Yep, sewing circles. Mm-hmm. Come on. The church. The church is dying or dead. It's gone. So you're held responsible. Uh, this is not the right message. Okay, I'm back. All right. Can y'all see me? Can y'all see me? All right. I need to help Courtney uh, Duthard. I need, to, I need to help Courtney right quick. <laughs> because apparently Courtney came late <laughs> to class. She said you need to be careful of the message you are giving to the sheep. Let me ask the sheep on here. Did anybody on here feel that I gave the wrong message when I mentioned the church? Anybody? And did I tell y'all that the church is dead? Anybody on here? Before I shut it down. I need to know because I can't go back and correct any of this stuff once I hit the finish button. Anybody? Tell me. Did I kill the church? <laughs> did I? All right. Bobby says rebuke. No. Okay. I need to know if I killed the church. Because if you pay close attention to any of my posts. For the years I've been posting on Facebook and the hundreds of YouTube videos that I have. And the hundreds of Spreaker.com audio uh, and blogs that I have and podcast that I have, there's no way anybody could ever say what Courtney just said. There's no way. Because you looking at the building as the church, that building is just brick and mortar. Yeah, she came late. Uh, did I say she? Yeah. Yeah, came late. Latecomers get it wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That ecclesia, ecclesiastic gathering that y'all do at y'all's churches, the old way is dying. Especially in the black community. It's dying or dead. You are a part of the church. You are ecclesia. You're part of a body. You don't need a building for that. Yes. But the visual church organizations in our communities are not the healthy, vibrant churches of yesteryear. There you go. Uh, those types of churches are very rare now. Dan Matthews is saying. One of the reasons people allow the church to destroy their marriages is because some women are too busy serving the pastor and other men in the church and not their husband. The pastor has a wife. But you leave your husband at home unattended to. There it is. Uh, um, 
Lady Rochelle, that's why the divorces happen. I'm sorry, y'all. This is the after show. I'm sorry if we went an hour and 30 minutes, but I have to bring this up because I cannot go back and fix this because I don't want nobody like Courtney coming in here and trying to tell me that I killed the church. <laughs> that's what happens when you come in late. <laughs> yeah. The way church was done in in, the la in those days is dying. Yes, what well, is not necessarily a bad thing, Deanne's saying here. Uh, right, that's true. Now, I'm glad you said that, which is not necessarily a bad thing because something that the church did was horrible. They brainwashed a lot of people. They did things and they misinterpreted scriptures and they did things to children that was inappropriate. And that's why a lot of them messed up today. So you're right. Yeah. Um, so gotta be careful. I'm just trying to help the church, not kill it. So if you want to get, you want to stay in that old way, then go for it. Stay in that old way. We're going to go on with or without that church building. But the church that we know of today is not, this is not your father's Oldsmobile, that old commercial that says, this is not your father's automobile. All right? So, that's what happens when you come late. All right. I think I done, I done really done. I, I had a righteous indignation moment right there, and I just, and I turned the car on, and it froze my video, and that's why I didn't want to hit the finish button, because I wanted to make sure I get that out. Because, you know, these Bluetooths in these cars, they, they, they get the, anyway... <laughs> and you know whose fault it is? It's Lady Rochelle's fault. Because when I turned the car on, her show came on. Right there. It's called Warriors Talk, October 31st, 2016. <laughs> her show came on because all of my urban broadcast media shows that I've ever created and produced and what have you, they're in the cloud. And my phone connects to the cloud. So when I get in my car, the cloud is on my Ford screen. <laughs> so when I turn on the, my, my, my radio or whatever the thing is, all my old shows and Lady Michelle and, and anybody who I've produced, uh, their shows play. And, I, and I'm like, what? what? Are you in the car? Yeah. Uh, you told the raw truth, something most people in the church is not used to. Thank you. Thank you, Matheny. Um, so, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop. And uh, I, I ain't, I ain't going to drive because I, I, y'all going to be complaining I'm driving while I'm on. <laughs> so, I ain't going to do that. But I am about to go home. Uh, so... Thank you. Hey, uh, let's pray. God, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for the people of God who are here. We thank you for uh, those who are able to discuss and give uh, good uh, educational and spiritual answers, uh, ans answers that, that were helping those who are going through what they're going through in their relationships, whether they're single, whether they're dating, whether they're engaged, whether they're married. There's some great comments that went forth and many of them are using the discerning of spirits to help the people of God. Uh, God, I thank you for these couples who are able to discuss the issues that are going on in their marriages and be able to talk about it and let us discuss it on our show so that they could be helped as well. Uh, that young lady and that brother who's having issues in their in their bedroom, God, you know it. You're there. You've seen it. You know that some of the things that happened, maybe tr possibly traumatic, that happened in the young lady's life, and now there she is, uh, linked up with a brother, and they're no more twain, but they're one now. And so God help them, give them the insight, teach them what to do next, and be able to talk about it, and heal their hearts, and heal their bo heal their bodies, and their hearts, and their minds, and their and their spirit man. Uh, and uh, so that they can continue to live a good life together in holy matrimony and they can teach their children how you took them and, and healed them through this so that the children won't suffer as well. And God allowed them to be a powerhouse for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen and 
Amen. Go ahead and hit the share button. Blessings to you, Agape. Thank you for coming around and blessing us with your, your knowledge. Linda McCoy, I love you. Bobby, love you, man. Uh, uh, who else is on here? I think I saw Thompson on here. Blessings to you, young lady. You're, you're a blessing to me. Lena Wright, my favorite member. <laughs> Deanne Matthew, you know I love you. Uh, Amber Rogers, I love you. And Eric Jewel Hayes, all the way down in Indiana, I love you, brother. Uh, Terry, uh, Terry Lockhart, blessings to you. I love you, Annie uh, Jefferson. I love you and uh, the many of you who uh, came by, but you had to leave because it is 12:11 in the Central. It's 1:11 in the Eastern, and them folk them went to bed. They went to bed. They gone. Some of y'all on California time, so it's the news just came on in your time. <laughs> it's only 10 o'clock. The sun is still out. Y'all out there swimming and stuff outside. All right. All right. Hit the share button. If you're on YouTube, bing, hit that bell. And we'll see you tomorrow for some kind of show. It won't be Romance in the Park. Mm -mm. I gave you enough to hold you for at least a week. See you next weekend for Romance in the Park. But we'll see you tomorrow probably for a Sir Walter Jones show. Bye-bye. Uh,